Now let's look at the case where all of our variables are related to each other, that nothing on this correlation matrix goes to zero. So there's a relationship between our two independent variables and there's a relationship between our independent variable one and our outcome variable and our independent variable two and our outcome variable. So what's happening now? First of all, let's look at what this looks like on our Venn diagram. Now, there's a relationship between x1 and y. There's a relationship between x2 and y. Each one of these predicts some difference in the variance in y. But this gets a little harder to figure out now because there's this little joint area here. So if we call this A and B and we call this C, there's this joint area here. So it's hard to partial out. It's hard to say separately what's the different contributions of each of these because C, just cut, this is the contribution of both of these. And so we have to be able to figure part of that out. So now our definition of R squared has not changed. It's still the variance explained over the total variance. So it represents what's inside of here. This is the variance explained divided by the total variance. That's R squared. The variance explained by our regression equation over the total variance. So nothing's changed there. But again, now it's hard to figure out the contribution of each one of these. So we have two additional concepts here. The first one we call the semi-partial correlation coefficient. Semi-partial correlation coefficient. The semi-partial correlation coefficient graphically represents this contribution right here. What is the contribution for x1 when I partial out all of the contribution for x2, including this little piece that x1 does explain this piece of y, but because so does x2, we ignore it for the semi-partial correlation, correlation coefficient. This is the contribution of x1 to y over and above the contribution of any other variable. This tells us, then, the change, the delta r squared. This is how much additional contribution, the semi-partial correlation co coefficient, is the additional contribution of any particular variable. If we wanted to do the semi-partial correlation, correlation coefficient for x2, that would be this area over here. This is the additional variance in y that's explained by adding x2 to the equation, right? It didn't add this part. This part was already there, explained by x1. It's this additional part. That's the semi-partial co correlation coefficient. One more concept here that we also cal can calculate, gotta believe, love being able to erase things, the partial correlation coefficient. This is different than the semi-partial co correlation coefficient. The partial correlation coefficient ignores the contribution of the other variable, right? So this is saying, what is the contribution over all of this variable, ignoring the other one, right? So how much of the variance in y is not estimated uh, anywhere else, right? And how much is or how much of the variance in y not estimated by this other variable is estimated by by this variable, right? So now this gets to the partial correlation coefficient. Both of these numbers, the semi-partial correlation coefficient and the correlation coefficient, they're a little esoteric. We need to understand them basically, and on occasion we'll actually need to use them, but I at least want to get you to this idea. This idea that we have different numbers for explaining the contribution of each of our independent variables with our outcome variable.